Welcome to episode 9 of the Irish Fitness Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the Viking Fitness Project. Um, Viking Fitness Project is one of Ireland's up-and-coming clothing brands. Myself and Shane are wearing uh, their new line, their new tops here today, mm. which I must say are very comfortable. Um, I'm looking forward to training in it later today. Nice for this uh, cold weather as we all experience yeah. in our little micro gyms with yeah. zero heating. So, uh, and again, the, the Viking is um, it's a, a kind of a, an emblem that's close to our heart chain, isn't it? Yeah. Being from Waterford, um, our brand and our label is uh, the Viking, the symbol of our gym. Uh, so again, it's it's quite close to our heart. Um, it's a strong kind of a proud Irish heritage as yeah. well. So uh, shout out to James and the lads from Viking Clothing. Um, if you're looking to purchase some of our fine wares, then uh, it's Viking Project, VikingFitnessProject.com. Yeah, that's the one. Yes, so check it out, guys. Uh, on Instagram as well. On Instagram on as well. Yeah. Follow them on IG. And, and we have uh, the competition as well. Yes, we have a shot at that, winning some of our nice new gear also. Um, if you go on to our page, follow their page, follow ours, and then reshare the story in it. Um, episode number nine, lads. Um, today's guest who you will see later on in the show we had on. Um, he's a, he's a kind of a, becoming a mental health guru, I suppose, over the last um, few months. Uh, Mr. Mark Toner, he started up his podcast, his own podcast, excellent podcast. Yeah. Um, I love it from the point of view of just discussing real issues with mental health. You know, it's becoming a forefront at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's, not, so, it's not much so of a stigma anymore. And someone like Mark is... Uh, not many people speak out about it in general, I suppose, mm. when it comes to Irish men, um, especially around kind of our ages, uh, like adult men. Mm. And then even in the CrossFit space, no one talks about it whatsoever. Mm. So uh, he's kind of the, he's at the forefront of that now, <laughs> kind of leading the conversation. Mm. And then also going into um, his opinion on competition and what people should actually be doing. Mm. Really interesting opinion as well. So Yeah, it is. It is. Like, like Shane was saying, um, the mental health aspect of things is not really talked about much. No. You know, it's it's kind of a, <clears throat> not anymore or not so much, but it's, it's still a little bit of a taboo subject. Yeah. Nobody wants to admit that they're having a bad time. You know what I mean? It's not something that you want to be proud of or whatever, even though there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and we should all be talking about it. It's still a struggle, you know? I've mm. struggled myself with uh, mental issues over the years, um, you know, often with, addiction and whatnot and I know the uh, the downside of um, you know dealing with them problems in your head and stuff like that and Mark now has been super honest with coming out and talking about what his personal thing because I think that's the best way to lead on any discussion yeah. is discuss your own personal experience of something yeah, isn't it exactly yeah. and when you're talking that then you're not just talking out of a textbook or you're not talking from other people's experience, you're talking right from the heart. Yeah. And that way then you can genuinely say, <clears throat> this is, you know, this is how I felt, this is how I dealt with it. Um, so I would definitely recommend checking out his podcast and having a little look. Um, he also, like Shane said, discussed the kind of competition element yeah. and where CrossFit is going, where do we stand now, you know, who should be doing Everyone should be doing competitions if they want, but who should be on this separate program? Who should try and follow the class program? And it is, it's, it's something that, as I talked about with Mark, um, I am still on the fence about. I'm um, struggling with it here in the gym. I don't think anyone should be told, you have to do this or you have to do that. But at the same time, from a point of view of developing a community and stuff like that, I know that if everyone is doing the same thing, it develops stronger bonds and stuff you know but is an hour a day enough to get some people to reach their mm. true potential yeah mark pointed out like he had a really good point in that the tiger he used the tiger woods analogy which you'll hear in the mm. episode that like not everybody that plays golf on the weekends is trying to be tiger woods but everyone yes. that does crossfit is trying to be matt fraser yeah yeah you know yeah. so well, we all see for matt some fraser, reason it's that we? yeah it's just that I don't know, it's just the sexiness about being good at something, mm. I suppose, and being, looks cool what that yes, guy's doing or what she's doing, so I want to I wanna look like that. Yeah, when yeah, in reality, yeah. 
and the, like the Emma Quaid example as well. Like mm. you're, not, you're probably not making the sacrifice she's making. No. Like she's not out drinking every weekend. Emma, she lives and breathes it. She wakes yeah. up in the morning. Um, she does her work, obviously. She has an online business and stuff like that. But everything in her whole day revolves around, is this going to make me better? Or is it going to take away from my performance on yeah. the comp floor? I'd actually like to open up a discussion, even if we did it on maybe Instagram. If mm. people want to just comment on a post that maybe if you post a clip like this, yeah. um, what they think of the whole thing. Mm. Like, what side of the fence are you on? Are you, are you, doing, are you doing CrossFit for... I'm actually doing a, a, a college project on it right now myself. Okay. Like, the everyday CrossFitter mm. for health and longevity versus the competitor. Mm. And because to me, they're two different mindsets. They are. They are. Um, but I suppose the thing that Mark is pointing out is that People think they're a competitor when they're mm. just not. They're just not there. Mm. And what is RX? What is elite level? What is know? RX? Yeah, what's, that's the big thing now is yeah. what, you know, <clears throat> what do you need to do to be competitive? We yeah. know that to be competitive in RX now, if you're, if you're considering RX as the top boys in mm. Ireland, like that top 10 on the leaderboard, even top 20, then realistically, you probably do have to do an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah, I'd say so. And, and then and then some after that. Yeah. It's like, what? it's not what's done in the gym, it's mm. more what's done outside the gym as well. Exactly. It's not just there, there are two hours of training, because most people, if they have the will to do, can do that. Yeah. But are they willing to dial in their nutrition? Are they going to stay away from all the garbage? Are they going to not yeah. drink? Are they going to go to bed? and get nine hours in bed every night. No, not just sleeping, man. Do they have full-time jobs? Do they have families? Do they do all this kind of stuff? I wonder if Mickey Smith got a Guinness sponsorship with that I don't turn, think he turn did. heads. <laughs> I don't think he did, and I would say, I haven't seen much uh, partying or drinking um, you know, clips up on his story. Okay. I would imagine that that would probably be, he got away with it last year. And uh, he said to himself, this year then, I think he talked about that in the podcast, that he's not going to drink yeah. as much, which is smart. And maybe like when he posts him drinking, that's like 2%, 1%, yeah. 2% of the time he's actually doing it. And that's when he posts that's it. And people think that he, well. he's always drinking. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. in reality, he's probably, it might be one wor point he's probably working harder than every two or three days yeah. or something like that. He's working harder than most people. You know, mm. that's, why the, that's why he's the best. So It is. It's a tough question. I think it would be down to the individual. Yeah. But where do, you, where do you decide who makes the decision? Because um, a lot of the time what I've seen is people just automatically say to themselves after a year or whatever, if they want to compete, right, I have to be doing this competition program. Where is it, is it necessary for them to do it? Is it appropriate? Should they, they be doing it? You know, is it, is it like, is it up to the coach to say to them, nah, you're not really, you shouldn't really be doing yeah. that? Or I'm a firm believer in people having freedom. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love the fact especially with this type of training that people can come in and they can make a decision that if I want to go for it, if I want to put in the extra hours and stuff like yeah. that. But then there's the other side of me, the affiliate side, owner side, that says, right, the more people that are on these comp programs, the more people are off to the side, doing their own thing, takes away from the classes. Um, and what we're trying to develop here is a sense of community and a sense of, uh, you know, togetherness and all mm. that. So. Again, I'm on the fence over. Uh, I will decide, make more decisions about about again me personally and and uh, the gym itself over the next um, couple of weeks. But it is a very interesting discussion to yeah. have. I don't think there's a right and a wrong. No. I think some people should be doing it because they have the potential to really better themselves. I think that's the thing. I was gonna I was gonna make the point of potential. Yeah. Like you have to be kind of. Realistic. Hon honest with yourself as well, mm. which is a tough thing to do, and people don't want to hear it. Mm. Um, I've had numerous discussions, even as a coach, with people mm. like that. Of do like, for example, if you are going to be a professional athlete in any sport, mm. you probably get scouted mm. to be on a team or a national level, like represent mm. your country or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't just decide I'm going to play for Ireland no. in the sport. That's a good point. Someone else decides that for you. That's just a very because good point. that's not really in CrossFit. The athlete, rather yeah. than the athlete picking yeah. what level they Whereas are. Whereas in CrossFit, you can decide yourself. Yeah. Okay, now I'm, I'm just going to just be, say, right. I'm going to the CrossFit game. And I'm that's signing it. up for comp training. Yeah. Here I go. I go. Ben Bergeron's yeah, yeah, going to get yeah. me to the games. Ben Bergeron doesn't know who, doesn't even know who you are. Yes. Because he needs to see potential first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah, then yeah. recognize that. But that's like, that's the good thing about CrossFit as well. Yeah. You can work as hard as you want. Yes. And no one can tell you otherwise. No. 
Whereas in like other sports, I played soccer for a long time, and the whole soccer thing was and any any team sport really. Mm. Um, and there's individual individual sports like athletics and stuff as well. I'm sure, but it's more like you're not good enough, so you're mm. not you're not going to be. Is that because it's part of a team? Maybe, but there is you know definitely I mean? sports. They want the best you know, like, team there's or like whatever. gymnastics, the individual even. ones. Yeah, like gymnastics can be the same. You know? yeah, and yeah, obviously, yeah, it's yeah. all results driven. Like it is, is. It is. But sometimes someone has to tell you, you know, it's not for you. Like it's not. Yeah. It's not in your. Uh, it's bloody hard to know yeah. because is it a question then of say some of the people right? Jimmy comes in, he says, right, I want to get on the podium at a competition next year in the RX. As a coach, if we doubt him and we don't see that he'll never the do initial it. potential yeah he's not going to do he it he doesn't even have a chance whereas yeah. if we say to him right fair play to you yeah. sign up for the program try our best and should we just leave the people then try it see can they make the progress yeah. and then make a decision and then make a decision i'm thinking that's what that's a good that's way a pretty good way of doing it. that's the way i'd yes I, i'd approach it but at the same time someone says yeah i want to win this so and so come some someone mm. comes in and said i want to win the ifc Mm. which is a pretty high-level competition mm. that, that's run down here, Good you know, so um, I want to win that, but I'm just gonna, I'm just starting CrossFit now. Mm. I was like, okay, if you show up on Wednesday and you win Grace in the mm. class, or you win Fran, mm. then I'll believe you. That's what, you have I a top three time or something. Saying, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like a potential thing as well. Yes, I think if someone comes to classes and they're RX and everything, they have the potential to do the gymnastics and the weights, and they've proven that by doing them in class. Yeah. They're even scaling up some of the times. Yeah, yeah. You know that they have their nutrition dialed in, they're not on the piss, they're doing all that kind of stuff. Then maybe then that's the time to talk about, okay, you can go on the competition into something program. Else, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you have to almost like earn your right to go on to a competition Yeah, and you don't program. want someone then, a, a, a big thing I'd be fearful of is someone that has potential, mm. but then goes to goes into it too fast, into like yeah. a top level, yeah. and then they have a bad experience, mm. and then it becomes like, no, I did this competition negative. once, and I just basically got trashed for the mm. whole thing, and it didn't suit me. And if they, if that person just dropped down one level, mm. they could have maybe got a podium or a top 10 or something. It, yeah. And then it would have been a different, that's a different experience, point. you know, so. Um, it's tricky though, and that's all part of being a coach, if mm. you're gonna coach. It's all brand athletes. new, like, yeah. like Toner, you'll see Mark now talking about later on the podcast, he said that, because it is such a new thing, we're not yet capable of foreseeing a lot of stuff going mm. on, especially the transition from just having a normal program yeah. into this competition world. You know what I mean? It's a big fucking jump in in what it takes to get to like that higher level. Yeah. You know what I even mean? what they call it now, if you notice any sanctions, even mm. before there was the world sanctions even came out when there were still regionals. Mm. These like high level competitions like Wadapalooza and the Granite Games and stuff were like kind of like the forefront of stuff that wasn't sanctioned by CrossFit but they were still pretty mm. big. And CrossFit was a go to them like games athletes. And they had like scale, intermediate, mm. RX, RX plus, mm. and then elite, you know. And now yeah, the, the now elite, the elite thing is the thing. Yeah. When like some people are still like RX isn't RX anymore. No. You know RX is almost like intermediate. Yeah. If depending on the competition obviously there is ones like I think in Ireland we don't have an elite division yet. No, we have a few elite athletes. A few, a few top world class athletes. Have, say f four or five of the lads could be considered elite. Elite, yeah. One female, yeah. possibly two, but obviously Emma is Emma elite. is she top is five elite. in the world. That's one hundred percent. And then you have the lads say the likes of Sam, Jamie, Petey, and Mickey. Yeah. I would consider them elite. I think the lads, the other lads are kind of high-end RX. Mm. That's what they are. I know they are. But uh, yeah, it's, um, I think it's, uh, you, you could have many a discussion on it um, as far as you know, individual athletes and stuff like that. I think uh, what I will be doing, again, figuring it out over the next few weeks or whatever, is taking things on an individual basis. Um, you have to have the freedom to, to lead people to grow, but you also have to have some supervision as well. Because people want to watch the videos online and then they think, yeah, I can do this. I can fucking, you know, I have the potential, yeah. I have the will, I have the drive, I'll do anything. And um, that, that drive is, could be misguided because yeah. there's so much technique involved, you have to be coached. So people coming in and wanting to go onto a program and having zero eyes on them. Yeah. Because if they're being programmed on remote programs, uh, I don't know anyone that does video analysis, do you? I mean, a few, a few people, a few smaller programs would, but mm. any of the big dogs, you're talking 
like the big the biggest like programmers in the world would be like mm. Com Train, Misfit, mm. and Training so, Think Tank yeah, and stuff like that. I would imagine it would be difficult to get video now. You're not going to like, unless they have, I know some of them have remote coaches that are just for you. Okay. I know Training Think Tank definitely do that. You might get one video a week. Yeah. How many movements do we do? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So if you're on these programs and you're, if you don't have all your techniques spot on, even if you're getting individualized programming and they're watching one video a week, that's only one video. Yeah. That's how many movements do we do? To, to say 30 on a regular basis. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff in there. Can you look so at my power clean? Can you look is at my it better to, um, I was talking to Neil Laverty about it and he made a very interesting point. He said, even his top athletes, he would still insist on them jumping in mm. to classes sometimes so he can see what's going on. That's a good point. The community boy, Bob. Yeah, yeah. You know what that's what CrossFit we, is. And we do that here as well, yeah. even though there's a few of us on sure different we get programs. In, uh, it's a minimum of uh, one class a week. Yeah, and, and it makes all more. the difference for everybody. It was huge. And having the eyes on you as well and seeing. Um, as far as, I think, good advice for someone if they are on an individualised programme to video themselves. Yeah, over and over again. Most people, and I know you do it, I do it as well. Most people, even if they're not in the game too long, they would have a good idea of what looks bad mm, and what yeah. looks good because they've seen so many videos of the elite people mm, doing it. Yeah. So they will say, oh, back looks bad on that yeah, or whatever. Exactly. So I suppose our advice on, if you're doing your own thing, you're doing a remote program or whatever, video everything and watch it. Spend, you know, 20 minutes a day yeah. watching it. You don't have to watch every second of every workout, but watch where you think you might be weak or where you, you might struggle or if it didn't feel good in the That's, middle of the workout. I mean, that was like when I was first starting doing the kind of competition style mm. stuff, I suppose it was. I, I remember going through delete memory off my phone. I think I had these 500 videos. Yeah. And half of <laughs> them were go. just me on a yeah. pull-up bar or me lifting That's the way to a deal, barbell, man. you know? So it's just over and over again, look at yourself. Go on YouTube, mm. look up how Rich Froning does a thruster versus yes. how you do a thruster yeah, and then yeah, you'll know yeah. the difference. Compare the two and then yeah. see how it goes. And if you, if you knew a thruster anywhere near someone like him, who can mm. do God knows how many of them under any kind of circumstances, then you're, you're, you're doing, doing, pretty, you're doing me, pretty well. Call me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. Uh, uh, so, um, after the break, uh, we will have a chat with Mr. Mark Toner and uh, see his views on what we just discussed. And uh, hopefully he can throw some more light on things. And today's guest, we have all the way from up the north in CrossFit Infected, Mr. Mark Toner. Mark, how are you, buddy? How's things? Good, mate. Good. Good, good. Yes. Good this morning. Excellent, excellent. Uh, really appreciate you Let's... taking the time. I know you're a busy man, um, so I really appreciate you coming on, and uh, we're really excited to talk to you. We're going to delve into the, the psyche of the modern CrossFitter as much as we can and uh, see can we come up with any answers for these uh, youngsters and whatnot. Bunch of lunatics, all uh, of us. <laughs> they are, yeah, yeah, that's it. So Mark, um, could you give us just a little brief um, kind of history on your, we'll say, training background? I know that you were a fighter and then your, uh, your intro into CrossFit and how you got started and how Infected came about. Uh, yeah, I've always sort of been into fitness and uh, it started, I think it started like most of us with bodybuilding. Or, well, it wasn't even the, to call it bodybuilding, would glorify it at bench press seven days a week for about seven years. And um, there's a wee bit of feedback on the noise. Hold on. Is that? Uh, yeah. well, I did bench press about seven days a week for seven years. Nice. Uh, Came out of university, actually was studying management at university, came out of university, graduated and thought, what the fuck am I going to do with the rest of my life? Because I didn't fancy, as probably some of you know, I like to wear a hat backwards every day. Yes, so yes, yes. It didn't, really, it didn't really tie in with any career paths. Uh, no, I was looking aside, I didn't have a clue what I was planning to do, so I ended up going to... Uh, the European Institute of Fitness in Spain to qualify as a personal trainer. Right. I went out there, went out there for two months, and just sort of had the time of my life and decided this is what I want to do for the rest of my life in some form. Went to Brisbane in Australia, got into CrossFit, uh, 
and was doing Muay Thai at the same time. So it was sort of just looking for that intense style of training. Yeah. Uh, the Australian story sort of all went tragically wrong at one point. Uh, I talk about it in detail in my podcast, the Mark Toner podcast, if you want to hear the full, long, tearful, crazy story. But uh, came back to Ireland and opened up CrossFit Infected. Um, we've been going strong ever since. Brilliant. That's which, a, that's which a very... Is a bit of a lie, but Hey, we'll we, we all get our we all get our ups and downs, brother. That's an interesting that you, that you started out in um, Australia as well. It was the same for myself and also Claxton. Now I, I know yes. I know Claxton doesn't have a, a CrossFit gym. He uh, he does CrossFit, but he won't he, pay. He, he won't pay his affiliation. He's not though. A crossfit, nah, 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 he's not. But he he did experience CrossFit. We'll say over in Australia. So a lot of we his, get to watch boys doing it all the time. We get to experience it, like, but yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Shout out to Kevin Claxton. So you came back then, and you were obviously uh, bit by the bug, and you wanted to get stuck into um, coaching people and and open your own affiliate. What year was that, Mark? 2014 CrossFit Infected opened. A we were doing it actually from a spur room, sort of similar to your story. We were doing it from a spur room at home for. For nearly nearly two years before that, so I mean, oh, we're good. we're here five years, but we're sort of going about seven. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. Was in Brisbane, the two years before that, and you decided to make the jump then eventually onto uh, getting the the spot. I would imagine that if you were the same as me, you started to run out of space, and there was more people wanting to join and whatnot. So you decided to get a place. Big time. The, the room wasn't big enough. We used to actually have to ask people, hey, could they do the workout outside? So mm. it would be like December, like now, and we'd be saying, yeah, yeah, take up yeah. to the regulars, any chance you could do your burpees outside today? <laughs> we don't have any space for you. Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant. Start. Yeah. Yeah, so Mark, um, you mentioned there quick about just your podcast, that you have the Mark Toner podcast. Um, do you want to give yes. us a, even a bit of a background on that and why you started that and what kind of topics you kind of cover on that as well? Uh, basically, last year, I mean, I'm sure these boys can relate. Uh, being a part of a, an affiliate isn't isn't as easy as it might seem, and I think a lot of us in in Irish CrossFit we're sort of in our early stages and we're struggling in some form or another mm. the, the, with business side of it, the the, the the mental health side of it. So last year, I had uh, I, for, for the last couple of years, I had a pretty bad run with depression. And I, thankfully by chance, my auntie is uh, sort of a very high level mental health practitioner. And I was fortunate that she was there at the right time. I'd hit a point where I was sort of starting to question how much longer I wanted to be on this earth. So I had, I was lucky that I had her close by and I went through my sort of sessions. Uh, I use the word counselling, but it's slightly different than that. But I went through my counselling sessions with her. I had like a drastic change in my sort of understanding of the world. And I've always wanted to start a podcast. I've been a Joe Rogan fan my entire life. He's, he's, he's almost educated me. So that's what we cover. We talk a, a lot about mental health. We talk a lot about CrossFit. We, we talk about, you name it, it, it appears. Yeah, that's brilliant, man. And the next thing kind of leads into the topic of mental health I wanted to ask you about. What do you yep. think of, say, even not even a top level crossfitter, but maybe even the average crossfitter that competes maybe three times every summer and the mental health kind of side of things there? Because I don't think it's covered a lot. You're kind of the only person that covers it in the I, space right now. So what do you think about that? I think that there needs to be a definitive line drawn. And I feel like us as the as the leaders, like the affiliate owners in Ireland, need to really draw this line in the sand. There's a complete difference between the elite sport and or, and standard RX competition, and it's sort of it's got completely blurred. And the reason why it's got blurred is because CrossFit HQ invested so much money into the sports side of it that we sort of all felt like this is what we do now mm. when it's not. Uh, across it, in fact, can be for one hour a day. We're all, you know, we're all DPP crossfitters, general physical preparedness. And if you 
if you do one more for the day and train really hard, the glass thing we said, like being prepped with intensity, not volume, okay. they tell you that on your CrossFit level too, and yet there's it, lines are blurred between what the guys who are trying to com- compete at filthy, say, for toxic, the Irish guys, the PDs, the Sam's Pierce and stuff, what they're doing, and mm-hmm. what I'm doing, or what our members are doing. And it's two completely separate things, and yeah. yet people like I did, like Tom did, like Claxton, we put the pressure on ourselves for years trying to do this when we don't have the time to dedicate to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. And there's, there's a lot of people, I think, it like stresses everybody out, and I think everybody needs to relax and define what you're doing. But I suppose it's our job as affiliate owners, as the sort of leaders of the community in Ireland, to draw that line and say, Look, I know you want to compete in RX competition, and you can do that, but you don't need to be in the gym for two and a half hours, three hours a day. That's something mm-hmm. completely separate. And that's not what this is about. But somewhere along the lines, it's all about fucking messy. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I think um, there is a, an immense pressure now under on people who want to compete to feel like they must do, you know, two to three hours, like you said. They're looking at um, Mr. X, Y, and Z on, you know, some kind of special program or whatever. So up in your gym, um, you all follow the same program, don't you? Yeah, we follow. I mean, it's taken a long time to. I take. I, I spend somewhere between ten to fifteen hours a week programming for our box. But my aim for our members is is that you can compete at national level in RX competition. So the likes of your competition down in Waterford, you can go and you can go to that and you can compete and you can enjoy the sport of CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Now you're not going to go and win because the guys who win are all in competition programs and they train for. X amount of hours per day. Mm. The problem is, though, I think that for us as affiliate owners, is our gyms aren't yet ready for this level of competitor. And there's no facilities that are good enough, as in, like, to put it bluntly, we're all training in glorified sheds that are painted. There's no <laughs> real standout facilities yet that mm. can facilitate a full membership where, where we get. We, the affiliate owner, you don't get holidays, you work 51 weeks a year, and mm. you, you, you're dressed quite constantly, and yet some things are trying to facilitate on top of that. Uh, this competitor thing happens, and it's just CrossFit isn't far enough the, down the line yet. It's mm. we well, need to be looking at Ben Bergeron, looking at Khalifa and stuff, and seeing what they're actually doing for their GPP community, mm. not what they're doing for the top athletes. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a very good point. And um, say if someone, Mark, came to you, so uh, say, we'll say Sarah has been training uh, a year and a half or, you know, she's past the year, Mark. She's quite talented. Um, she has, you know, a, a basic grasp of all the gymnastics and stuff like that. And she says, right, I want to be an RX athlete. I want to compete. What would you say to her? You can do it on our program. Uh Part, part of me doing filthy last weekend, I just wanted to see, I just sort of wanted to test what we were doing again. Mm. And I felt as good as ever doing it. Now, I, I understand that I'm never going to go anywhere and compete. I can't go to Waterford and win because I'm not training that far in, in the day. But realistically, you're never going to match the guys who are doing it as their sport. Mm. So what I would say is, Keep, do, keep coming to the gym, keep training, keep improving, and, and you can enjoy CrossFit as the sport as it is, not not something that you need to be keep pushing the pace, because let's be real, how many people are actually going to go to the games? Mm. It, it just doesn't, it, to me it doesn't make sense that there's not a definitive line, like every person who goes and plays golf isn't trying to be Tiger Woods, but yet in CrossFit, everybody's trying to be Tiger Woods. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. And uh, just to clarify, uh, yeah. he, he came tent up in the filthy 150 just doing your in-house program, didn't you? In our, it was our in-house program. Uh, me and Damien, me, Damien and Leah, and Sinead, sorry, we're all into our 30s. Actually, them three are masters athletes. Sinead had a baby in the last 12 months, so she's only really getting getting her flow back again. Uh, I've been struggling with depression, and I got back into training this year and was able to push on. So, like, 
the thing that sort of gets me is people want to follow these competitive programs, right? And then Saturday night, they're on the piss. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. Very good point. So, so, so like, and, and the thing is, like, it's our job as affiliate owners to, to get everybody to calm their jets, mm. everybody relax. This isn't, we're, we're not trying to be Tiger Woods here. We're trying to have a good time. So, and then once you take that, once you, once you say that and once that's accepted, the mm. vibe in the gym changes. Everybody's yeah. having a good time again, and it's not this constant. Like I did it as bad as anybody else. Mm. I, I I talk about it on my podcast when I wanted to get a hundred kg snatch, and that process maybe took two years of sort of just consistency, and I was close for a while, and then I hit a hundred kg snatch, and it felt good for two minutes, mm. and then I I compared it to like somebody even even at a national level who can do 120 because they're pushing for the games and I felt terrible again. Mm. And it's like, so so I started to reflect and think, what's all this about? It's It should be more fun than this every day. I didn't, like, life's fucking stressful enough. My yeah. one hour in the gym doesn't need to add to that. Yes, yes. So, like, I, I'm trying to more so be the voice of this to say that for somebody who is a reasonably good RX athlete, reasonably, it's okay not to try to be Tiger Woods. You don't. I don't come home from filthy and then say, okay, right, I need to get better. I need to get better. It's just like mm. this is just something I do five days a week for one hour, and that's where the enjoyment is. Mm. I think I think a lot of your wisdom comes with years in the game, and I think, um, like myself, I think everyone and yourself will come to the realization eventually that not everyone can be Sam or Mickey or Petey or whatever. And they will eventually settle back into like um, a kind of a normal training routine. I'm still a little bit on the fence about forcing people to to not do competition programs. We'll say I'm still a yeah. little bit. I'm not sure where I'm at with that. On one hand, I understand their point of view because we're wise and we're in the game a long time, and we have to made the decision. Okay, we don't have to go balls to the wall every day. But there's another side of me then that wants to give the youth the chance to, uh, we'll, ex- we'll say, you know, spread their, their, uh, their training and their competitive wings and see what it's like to go for, you know, a couple of hours a day or whatever. Now, I think if it interferes with their mental state of mind, then it's a different thing. But I do enjoy seeing the youths, uh, you know, go at it and, and make these uh, big commitments and stuff like that. What do you think? Are you, are you 100% in on, right? Everyone should be doing, you know, their hour a day and everyone should be doing the same thing. Or do you look at it on an individual basis? That's where I'm at at the moment. As I said, I'm struggling with it. Uh, basically, if I, if I give you my honest answer, Tom, is I was, I, I'm tired of being a broke-ass affiliate owner. Mm. I, don't, I don't really have, like, I don't really have many more years of doing it this way in my head so i can't focus on i want to i want to professionalize crossfit in ireland in the sense that i want to have a facility that is of the standard that some of the guys have in the american gyms Mm. so ultimately that's that's our goal across in fact and we like we say amongst our coaches we want to have a world-class facility Mm. one day I, I also want to have a, I want to have holidays. I want to have a break from mm. time to time. So I can't be focusing on on somebody going to Waterford and coming fifth, as opposed to me living the rest of my life as a broke ass affiliate owner. Yes, it, just, yes. it just doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah. So so the answer is yes. Our focus is solely on trying to change, as as Conor McGregor said, trying to change our bum lives because. Mm. If, if we hold up our hands and say, is anybody having loads of fun doing this? Mm. No, I think we all sort of buy into there's a big dream mm. and we're still working towards that dream. So we need to be single minded in, in our approach. And mm. that is the 99.9% of the population. Mm. That's not the one or two people who might go on to become an RX athlete for two or three years and then burn out and decide they want to become a jockey. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think. I agree. Um, I know I'm only in the sport maybe two, two and a half years now, but from what I've seen, it looks like it started out as a sport where you had to throw down, you had to beat your friend at Fran, mm. like do the RX yeah. weight and stuff, and now it's become more of, I suppose, the Glassman thing of 
lifting up jugs of antifreeze in your in your living room. Mm. I suppose we're not quite there but, as well, but somewhere in between is, where, is what we're is, looking for. Though, that what I'm saying is that you can get really, really fit on what we're doing. Yeah. You can get really fit on one hour a day. Mm. It's like, like, I know I have a pretty good standard of fitness. It's because whenever I show up for my one hour a day, I go balls to the wall. On mm. top of that, this is what your diet needs to look like. I don't know, hey. what's there on watch, the screen. watch that! Like, watch that! Claxton will want to know what's in there. <laughs> that's uh, tomatoes. Yes, lovely. <laughs> I like tomatoes. Wee bit of asparagus. <laughs> Yum! I like asparagus too. That's good stuff. I like, I like to chomp that down like a rabbit. Yes, yes. <laughs> that you looks like good, that? man. What else? Do I see a little couple of them white little fellas in there as well. A little bit of right. eggs. Go on, you may as well throw that throw one of them down the gullet as well while you're there. There you go. I'll spit her by action, the Boom. light goes full load. Yes, yes. That's it, boy. <laughs> Get it into it. <laughs> yes, so you're saying basically, right? Train, show up for your hour a day, but show up and give it hundred percent. And then dial in everything else also. Like your nutrition, get your rest in, take care of your mental health and all that kind of business. And see how fit you get and then. And then come back and speak to me. If you're doing all yeah, them yeah, things, yeah, yeah, then yeah. come back and speak to me. But probably what I will say is, there's guys who specialize in this, even in Ireland now. Mm. There's guys who specialize in this. If you want to do that, that's, that's something different. Yes. Because if we focus on that, we're, we're all going to still be living this life forever. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Irish CrossFit not going to move forward. when Like, we need... We need the whole general consensus of what CrossFit is to become more apparent that it's GPP. Mm. Whereas if you speak to people about it, they think it's a sport. Mm. And it's not a sport. It's a sport for 1%. And for 99%, it's a way to look after your body, look after your mental health. Yep. And have a friend circle that's not drinking whiskey all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can, so you can still do all these competitions. If you're training hard, you're taking care of your nutrition, you're getting your rest, you can still compete. As you, you and Leah and the team showed, uh, you, you placed 10th in Ireland's biggest team competition. This is the other point. Sorry, just while I'm on. Yeah, yeah, so go I ahead. I like I'm fucking ranting here. No, but this no. This is the other point. Rant away, if my we, friend. That's why we're if here. If we draw the line, right? If we as affiliate owners draw this line, and, and it's, been, it's been unbelievable what Filthy 150 have done. They've, they've, they've taken it to the elite level and they've shown that there's an elite level. But if we draw the line and say, right, these guys are doing the sport, everybody below us is GPP because we have we have families, we have jobs, we have careers to look after, we have our own mental health to look after, then the guys running the competitions need to program with that in mind. Mm. Like it still baffles me why the programming is for the top level when you can have so much more fun mm. just doing our X programming. And if we can draw a line in the sand and say this is the sport and this is RX, then mm. you can show up and compete in RX competitions where you're not going to get injured. Like, we've had guys in our gym get injured at competitions because I've looked at the program and I went, that's not for the 99%, that's mm. for the 1%. Yeah, and yeah. if nobody's going to speak out, up and speak out about this as, as, as the affiliate owners, then people are going to keep getting hurt because, mm. like, I can't, I can't do wads with 100 kg because I don't train often enough with it. Mm. And there needs to be sort of that definitive line. So now there's an option. You can try and compete in these sanctionals and go to Filthy 150 if it's your sport. And if not, you can compete more at a local level. And part of my sort of passion about this and why I'm speaking about it is I lived in Brisbane for two years. I seen, I seen real examples of this, of, you know, of affiliates that were, were proper professional facilities with a big team of coaches and people could go and sign up for RX competitions and know that they could do the workouts and compete. Mm. Whereas if the, workout is, if the workout is way too hard for everybody, mm. then our members go down and they're like, well, I can't do five of the 10 things they're asking me to do this weekend. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think there just needs to be a line in the sand. If you're competing in the sport, you're competing in the sport. If you're competing as a CrossFitter who does it for GPP and fun, that's something completely different and separate. and Ultimately, that's where the money is. That's where the community is. That's where... I agree. I agree. I think that the majority, and I'm sure it's the same with everyone's, majority of our membership base 
is just general people trying to come in, uh, have three or four good hours of the week, enjoy ourselves, and uh, then go home and not have to worry about the pressures of uh, competition and stuff like that. And I think that's what's leading me into it. And the next question, and I think you would be very good to answer it, is so we've seen um, a kind of a, in the open this year, we saw something that was, uh, it was quite uh, openly spoke about that um, I think a youngster, he felt under immense pressure and he did something that, um, you know, probably wouldn't have ordinarily done. Um, what advice would you give to the youngsters of today, or even the people in the classes and stuff like that? They feel like they have to live up to these expectations and then it makes them do stuff that is not within their character. Like I'm sure you've seen people shaving reps up in your box over the years and then obviously this was more uh, severe, it was kind of on a national stage or whatever. What would you say yeah. to them youngsters that feel under that pressure and um, think they need to do something to live up to expectations? One of the points, sorry, just before that I'd like to make is I do believe the Open now needs three categories, like I'm saying. I think it needs an elite level category, I think it needs an RX level for your standard GP beers who take it seriously but also have jobs and families and everything else and then it needs scaled intermediate. Uh, with the situation that you're talking about, I think the, the, the first thing is to say is that I think, look, everybody makes mistakes mm. and whenever you're under pressure, you, you, you tend to want to do crazy things. Mm. Uh, I think everybody needs to relax, take the level down. You have to decide what, what your goal is. Like ultimately, what is your goal? Are you trying to go for the CrossFit Games? Well, that's a completely separate conversation than I'm going to the gym five days a week, a week to get fit. So it's just trying to draw that line in the sand again. And then once you have that conversation with your athletes, you can decide if you're the right affiliate for them or not. If there's if for if you're a GPP and you just want to have a good time and still be able to compete national level, then we're the right gym for you. If not, and you're trying to kick on and be the next Tiger Woods, then there's people who in Ireland now who look after Tiger Woods as well. Mm. I just know which direction we have to go towards, and the reason why we have to go towards that direction is because really we're not we're not a thriving business yet. That's not to say if we ultimately one day open this world-class facility with a team of coaches and, and everybody gets holidays and it's, it's a good life, then we might have a category where we can look at the competition side of it again. Mm. But right now, Irish CrossFit is not on a level where it can, can keep being blurred because it's not stepping forward mm. at the affiliate level the way it should be. And do you think that is affecting uh, people's mental health in terms of the pressure? Um, you know, like a youngster comes in and he feels like he has to live up to these expectations because maybe somebody told him, the coach told him, wow, you're really good. Or someone else said, you should be competing. Or, you know, I, I think that that's a big thing is, is that what the expectations that other people put on the individuals then. It doesn't anymore a CrossFit infected because we removed a lot of them barriers. We okay. no longer in Zen Planner have a leaderboard. It just doesn't make sense. Before mm. when we had a leaderboard, people would try and break their backs to get high on the leaderboard. Like we have deadlift today, a heavy five. People would be gunning for that heavy weight. Mm. Uh, so it doesn't in our box, but I can I can appreciate I haven't been one of these people. I mean, I'm not speaking like I wasn't one of these people before. I was trying to be competitive, even though I never could really dedicate the time to it because we're trying to build a business at the same time. Yes. But I think you have to really decide what you're looking to do. And the reality is for most people, even the ones that think they're competitors, you're not. The truth is you're not because even though you train that amount of times, you're not looking after your nutrition, you're on the piss every weekend. Mm. Like, if you look at probably our leading competitor in Ireland, Emma, mm. uh, Emma McQuaid, I can, just from what you see online, like, she's not partying. This, mm. is, this is a religion to her. She lives that lifestyle. And unless you're prepared to make them sacrifices, then just come into the gym every day and enjoy it. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point, man. That's some sage advice there. Um, listen, it's 21 minutes past nine. I know you have a class now in a few minutes. 
I would love to continue. I could rant all day. Yeah, I know. Listen to this. I'd love to do this again, brother, in the new year. I think we yeah. could talk for at least another hour. Um, I'd be no I'd be excited to get you on in the new year again, and uh, we can uh, have another little chat about things. How's that sound? Perfect, mate. Good stuff. You're an absolute legend, Mark, and uh, keep up the podcast. I'm loving them, and I'm sure everyone else is getting great benefits from them as well. So, again, thank you very much for coming on, and we will do this again in the new year. How's that sound? Cheers, lads. Thanks very much. All for right, brother. Mark. Talk to you soon. We'll hang you up you there. Later. Take it easy, my friend. Us. Cheers. That was an interesting chat. Yeah. Um, big shout out to Mark. As I said, uh, he was in a bit of a rush there today, but we will definitely do that again in the new year. Uh, that's a wrap for episode number nine, is it, Shane? Nine, I number think so. nine. Hopefully. Hey, going into the double digits now <laughs> next week. Uh, next week, we're going to have on Mr. Michael Welch. Uh, he's fresh off the back of winning the Irish, or the, was it, the International Functional, Functional Fitness. Fitness World Championships as a master. So um, he's the 35 to 39 Open champ from 2019. Uh, he didn't do the Open this year. Obviously, he was away in Australia, so I'm very excited to talk to him. Mm -hmm. um, I said to people, when he turned 35, I said, We're, we've just entered the, uh, the Michael Welch era. So uh, it'll be good to get his uh, opinion on things the way they are at the moment. So until then, folks, we will see you next week.